Good evening, and welcome to Third Church, New York City. Let's begin by singing hymn number 125. How lovely are thy dwelling, uh, how lovely are thy dwellings, Lord, from noise and trouble free. How beautiful the sweet accord of those who pray to thee. Hymn number 125. I'll read from the Bible and correlative passages from Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures by Mary Baker Eddy. This week's readings are about different ways to pray. The Bible. Psalms. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God and we are the people of his pasture. 1 Thessalonians Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Prove all things, hold fast that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. 1 Samuel Hannah had no children, and she was in bitterness of soul and prayed before the Lord and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid and remember me and not forget thine handmaid, but will give unto thine handmaid a man-child, then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life. And it came to pass, as she continued praying, that Eli marked her mouth. Now Hannah, she spake in her heart. Only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli thought she had been drunken. And Eli said unto her, How long wilt thou be drunken? Put away thy wine from thee. And Hannah answered and said, No, my lord. I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, 
but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. Philippians Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say, rejoice. In everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be be made known unto God. Daniel, it pleased Darius to set over the kingdom an hundred and twenty princes, which should be over the whole kingdom. All the princes have consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any god or man for thirty days, save of thee, O king, he shall be cast into the den of lions. Wherefore, King Darius signed the writing and the decree. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his windows being open in his chamber toward Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. Psalms Cause me to hear thy loving kindness in the morning, for in thee do I trust. Deliver me, O Lord, from mine enemies, Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. Lead me in thy truth and teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. Ephesians Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Acts And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bands were loosed. Matthew, I say unto you that if... Two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask. It shall be done for them of my Father, which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Mark. And Jesus, when he came out, saw much people and was moved with compassion toward them because they were as sheep not having a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. Jesus said unto them, Ye do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. John, search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life and they are they which testify of me. Second Timothy, Continue thou in the things which thou hast learned, and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation, through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, 
that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. And from the New Testament Modern English, Luke. One day it happened that Jesus was praying in a certain place, and after he finished, one of his disciples said, Lord, teach us how to pray. When you pray, returned Jesus, you should say, Father, may your name be honored. May your kingdom come. Give us the bread we need for each day, and forgive us our failures, for we forgive everyone who fails us. And keep us clear of temptation, John, hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask, and ye shall receive, that your joy may be full. For the Father himself loveth you, because ye have loved me, and have believed that I came out from God. Luke, and he withdrew himself into the wilderness and prayed. Mark, and he was there in the wilderness forty days, tempted of Satan, and was with the wild beasts, and the angels ministered unto him. From the New Testament Modern English, Ephesians. In conclusion, be strong, not in yourselves, but in the Lord, in the power of his boundless strength. Put on God's complete armor so that you can successfully resist all the devil's craftiness. For our fight is not against any physical enemy. It is against organizations and powers that are spiritual. We are up against the unseen power that controls the dark world and spiritual agents from the very headquarters of evil. Take your stand, then, with truth as your belt, integrity your breastplate, the gospel of peace firmly on your feet, salvation as your helmet, and in your hand the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God. Above all, be sure you take faith as your shield, for it can quench every burning missile the enemy, the enemy hurls at you. In all your petitions, pray at all times with every kind of spiritual prayer, keeping alert and persistent as you pray for all Christ's men and women. Colossians, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. And from the Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures, What we most need is the prayer of fervent desire for growth and grace, expressed in patience, meekness, love, and good deeds. Prayer, watching, and working, combined with self-immolation, are God's gracious means for accomplishing whatever has been successfully done for the Christianization and health of mankind. In order to pray aright, we must enter into the closet and shut the door. We must close the lips and silence the material senses. In the quiet sanctuary of earnest longings, we must deny sin and plead God's allness. 
we must resolve to take up the cross and go forth with honest hearts to work and watch for wisdom, truth, and love. We must pray without ceasing. Individuals are consistent who, watching and praying, can run and not be weary, walk and not faint, who gain good rapidly and hold their position, or attain slowly and yield not to discouragement. The divine being must be reflected by man, else man is not the image and likeness of the patient, tender, and true, the one altogether lovely. But to understand God is the work of eternity and demands absolute consecration of thought, energy, and desire. The habitual struggle to be always good is unceasing prayer. Its motives are made manifest in the blessings they bring, blessings which, even if not acknowledged in audible words, attest our worthiness to be partakers of love. Self-forgetfulness, purity, and affection are constant prayers. Whatever inspires with wisdom, truth, or love, be it song, sermon, or science, blesses the human family with crumbs of comfort from Christ's table, feeding the hungry, and giving living waters to the thirsty. Our Master taught his disciples one brief prayer, which we name after him the Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer is the prayer of soul, not of material sense. Jesus did his own work by the one Spirit. He said, My Father worketh hitherto, and I work. When Christ changes a belief of sin or of sickness into a better belief, then belief melts into spiritual understanding, and sin, disease, and death disappear. In divine science, where prayers are mental, all may avail themselves of God as a very present help in trouble. Love is impartial and universal in its adaptation and bestowals. It is the open fount which cries, Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. The sculptor turns from the marble to his model in order to perfect, to perfect his conception. We are all sculptors, working at various forms and molding and chiseling thought. Observation, invention, study, and original thought are expansive and should promote the growth of mortal mind outside of itself, out of all that is mortal. Jesus uncovered and rebuked sin before he cast it out. When error confronts you, withhold not the rebuke or the explanation which destroys error. To heal by argument, find the type of the ailment, get its name, and array your mental plea against the physical. Argue at first mentally, not audibly, that the patient has no disease, and conform the argument so as to destroy the evidence of disease. Mentally insist that harmony is the fact, and that sickness is a temporal dream. Realize the presence of health, 
and the fact of harmonious being until the body corresponds with the normal conditions of health and harmony. Remember that the letter and mental argument are only human auxiliaries to aid in bringing thought into accord with the spirit of truth and love, which heals the sick and the sinner. The understanding of truth and love, the principle which works out the ends of eternal good and destroys both faith in evil and the practice of evil, leads to the discernment of the divine idea. Consistent prayer is the desire to do right. Question, how can I progress most rapidly in the understanding of Christian science? Answer, study thoroughly the letter and imbibe the spirit. Adhere to the divine principle of Christian science and follow the behests of God, abiding steadfastly in wisdom, truth, and love. Let's pray for the congregation first silently, then repeat together the Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Let's sing hymn number 195.
not what I am, O Lord, but what Thou art. That, that alone can be my soul's true rest. Thy love, not mine, bids fear and doubt depart and stills the tumult of my troubled breast. Hymn number 195. This church is a branch of the Mother Church, the first Church of Christ Scientist in Boston, Massachusetts. We hold Sunday services at 11 a.m. and Wednesday testimony meetings at 7.30 p.m. We also have services in Spanish, Sundays at 1 p.m. and Wednesdays at 5.30 p.m. All services are held online and in person. Third Church offers Sunday school classes online and in person for children and teens. These free one-hour classes are held each Sunday. At Sunday school, students learn how much God loves them and cares for them. They also learn about the Bible characters and lessons and the healing power of truth. For more information on times and classes, please send us an email, thirdchurch at thirdchurchnyc.com. Third Church maintains a reading room on the first floor of this building. The reading room provides a quiet place for prayer and study, and all are welcome.
Here you may purchase books and recordings on Christian science. The reading room also has the latest issues of the Christian Science Monitor, an award-winning international news weekly, available to read or purchase. Reading room hours are Monday through Friday from 1 to 4 p.m. Christian Science is practical and it heals. Our meeting is now open for all to share experiences of healing and spiritual insights that prove God's ever-presence and power in their lives. If you're listening by telephone and would like to share, please press star 6 and wait until your line is unmuted. We ask that you speak directly into the microphone of your phone. Don't use the speaker phone. This way your message will be easier to hear. If you're watching by Zoom, you can choose the raise your hand icon or unmute yourself and speak. Thank you for your readings on prayer. I would imagine like many Christian scientists, I have prayed in a variety of ways and been healed in a variety of ways, sometimes in surprising ways, whether I'm working with myself uh, by myself or with a practitioner. Um, sometimes one turns away totally from what might be called the name of the disease and just handles the, uh, what's going on mentally. Sometimes one uh, does, as sometimes is recommended by Mrs. Eddy in the chapter on practice, uh, calls the name, the disease by name. Uh, I have sometimes found uh, that if I remind the practitioner of what I think is going on in terms of Materia Medica, sometimes that healing happens more quickly. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it's just a matter of preparing thought and being quiet. And <clears throat> I'd like to testify to a rather surprising healing oh, about 10 years ago or so of another person. Um, I w wasn't intending to heal him at this time, but the quality of thought did bring about a healing. Uh, <clears throat> I was with a student in Bushwick, which at that time was not the best of areas, and we were doing a, a small independent film, a short, uh, and I was helping him and other students, and um, it was, I think, the last day, and this particular student was sort of uh, vigorously applying or misapplying uh, some of the um, uh, tenets of uh, method acting, and he got way carried away in digging a hole in the ground and got lots of dirt in his eye. And of course, we I think it was during a rehearsal actually, and we all stopped and went to the bathroom with him and uh, he did what would be logical, I guess, as you would try to flush all that out of your eye. And after about 15 or 20 minutes or something like that, a long time, uh, he still was in quite a bit of pain and it seemed as if there was something lodged in his eye. Uh, there was um, a hospital about six blocks away uh, from this apartment in which we were working. And I said I would accompany him to that hospital, to the emergency room. Um, we got to the emergency room, it was a Sunday afternoon, as I recall, and it was packed, and it was loud, and it was chaotic. And I don't usually do well in those kinds of atmospheres. I, I just, the thing I want to do is just to kind of leave, uh, because there seems to be no order, no decorum, not, nothing going on. But there we were, he filled out his card, and we sat. And I didn't talk to him. I just decided I would close my eyes basically so I could get some peace in this atmosphere. And we were silent, I think, for about 10 minutes. He was next to me, but uh, we were silent. And I just uh, prayed very quietly and humbly with, oh, gentle presence. And I wasn't trying to heal him. 
He was steeped in Materia Medica, his mother, uh, whom he had called before we went to the emergency room, said, you've scratched your cornea, you've got to get that out. She was a medical nurse, a very fine cardiac nurse in Florida. So fr from that point of view, she knew what she was talking about, and we took that as what we needed to do, go to the hospital, and the cornea has been scratched, and it, whatever's in the eye has got to come out. But I wasn't thinking of that, and I wasn't, all I was thinking of is quieting my thought. And so it was a, a good 10 minutes, I think, that I just uh, went over, uh, I don't know if it was once or several times, oh, gentle presence, peace and joy and power. And at some point I opened my eyes, and it was very rare that he was quiet, and he said, it's gone, it's out of my eye. I said, well, how do you know? He said, it doesn't hurt anymore. Let's go. And I said, no, let's stay for a little bit. Let's just give it five or 10 minutes. Um, and after five or 10 minutes, he kind of maneuvered his eye. He said, there's nothing in my eye. Let's get a sandwich. I said, okay. <laughs> Praying with her gentle presence made me hungry. So, um, so we left. Now, I don't know whether there was something still in his eye or whether it was a scratch and the scratch was healed or that the something that was, uh, was to be an object really in the divine mind was not there. If it's not in the divine mind, it's not in the divine mind's creation. It, it just, God didn't know that. I didn't get in, into that. All I know is that after sitting for a while, I said, are you sure? And uh, you don't want to lose your place in line. Are you sure? And he said, yes. And so we went, we got a sandwich, we went back to the rehearsal and the filming, this was about two in the afternoon, I think, one or two in the afternoon. And the filming proceeded until about 10 o'clock that night without any problems whatsoever. The next day he was back in school and class, there were no problems whatsoever. Um, so that's just an example of a surprising prayer uh, where when our consciousness is uplifted, it radiates uh, to the other, or to, to the person in need. And I was astonished and very grateful for any number of reasons. Thank you for your test, for your readings. Sometimes healings come easy. Um, sometimes it takes some, uh, study and prayer. Sometimes it takes correcting a, a belief I've been holding on to for a long time. Um, just a few examples. Once, um, about two weeks after I had class instruction in Christian science, where I'd spent two weeks in prayer and study and learning how to heal, um, how to get close to God, how to see who I am spiritually. Um, about two weeks after that, I was hiking in the mountains and I was wearing sandals and I slipped. And as I fell, I could hear some crunches in my ankle, kind of breaking sounds. And I watched my ankle, ankle swell. And as I did, I just looked at the ankle and I said, no. And that was all. And the no, behind the no was, I just didn't learn how to heal to watch my ankle be hurt. And with that one thought, no, acknowledging God's presence and acknowledging that I was a spiritual idea, I watched the ankle go back to its normal size. And I continued, we had just started the hike, um, and I continued the hike. Um, the next day, I, uh, my little brother and I had a tap dancing class, and my ankle was just slightly sore, but I was able to move comfortably, and um, we had a great dancing class together. Um, it wasn't for 10, 15 years after that that I realized that before that healing, my ankle had, I'd sprained my ankle just about every other year and limped around for a week or two until I realized I was spiritual and it became healed. Um, so, and you never know the ramifications of, of healings. 
Um, there was another time um, that I was coming back from Mexico, and I had a I was facing a three day bus trip from central Mexico back to the U.S. And I, the last day before I left, I had some pretty severe stomach problems. And I thought, oh boy, I don't want to get on a bus and have stomach problems for three days and three nights. And um, I just started to read the signs in health. And I read all day. And the next day, um, I, w I was staying with friends and they drove me to the bus station. And while I was waiting for the bus, I continued to read um, the science and health, and I read um, about healing. I read all the things, a lot of the things I read tonight, and I just listened to it, and I just absorbed it. And the minute I stepped on the first step getting into the bus, my stomach completely went back to normal, um, and I had a great ride. I met a lot of people. But I was so grateful that I didn't have to have that ride um, with, with stomach problems. Um, I'm just so grateful. I'm grateful for that I know that healing will take place. I'm grateful that the method of healing is so non-evasive, non-intrusive. I mean, um, no medicine, nothing that shakes up your body. Um, no intrusive, any any type of I don't know whatever medical 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 ideas would use, but it's just such a gentle healing process, and not only does it heal you physically, um, it gives you a sense of peace and protection and compassion towards yourself and others, and. I'm just so grateful that um, Mary Baker Eddy found this system and wrote it in a book and taught it to others so that we can practice it too and heal ourselves, heal our families, heal our communities, um, and support our church with this strong, powerful prayer. Thank you for your readings on prayer. Those were fabulous. I, I know many times when I have been overcome with fear and doubt, I would turn to the Bible stories and to the Psalms. David wrote many Psalms of protection, um, I think Psalms 23 and 91 are the most beloved psalms that there are, that people turn to the most whenever they feel in trouble. In Psalms 23, he, so in his wisdom in writing these, said that the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Those are very simple words, but very powerful words. Um, he must have experienced in his life, at times, severe fear of needing something that visibly was, was not there. And he also continued towards the end of that psalm, Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. That is a powerful reminder that God is only good, and there can only be good. And in 91, one of the parts that means the most to me is there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. 
And keeping us in all God's ways is, is ways of goodness, ways of protection, ways of perfectness. And during these, this time where fear and doubt was, was so prevalent in my thought, I experienced a tremendous peace in experiencing these words, experiencing the story about, uh, you read uh, Daniel in the, in the lion's den, where he was so composed and confident in God's power to totally protect him and to deal with the, the lions and take care of them and not have the two in conflict <laughs> um, harmonious loving situation. And I'm very grateful that there are these stories that we can turn to, that there are the Psalms and experience what those of tremendous faith experienced in times of need where they gained their confidence in God, their faith in God, their composure their peace during difficult times. In your readings, it was is a powerful reminder of prayer and what to do when we experience these times of need. Thank you. Thanks to all for your presence, for your testimonies and your prayers. Let's conclude by singing hymn number 183. Make haste, O man, to do whatever must be done. Thou hast no time to lose in sloth when all to truth must come. Hymn number 183.